start talking about the continuity. All right, so I kind of talked a little bit yesterday about the removable discontinuity. So we, we more frequently refer to that as a whole, but if you think about it removable, you have just removed one single point. Okay? They use the terms on the AP exam, they use the terms removable and non-removable, so you need to know the difference between those two. Non-removable are asymptotes, jump discontinuities, illustration of a jump discontinuity that occurs with like a piecewise function um, where the function will jump from one point to another uh, but those are your non-removable okay they are discontinuities but it's not because of just like one single point that's been removed there's some other bigger issue now we know what a vertical asymptote is and we just spent time talking at the beginning of the class about the infinities that they approach on other sides, but here's the calculus definition of a vertical asymptote. Um, or they refer to it as an infinite discontinuity, which makes sense because on the sides it goes to infinity. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is we learned it in pre-calculus before we got to calculus, but honestly it was discovered through calculus. Um, that it started in calculus and then we kind of gone back and talked about these functions there are other ways of figuring out these things, but you'll find out that calculus makes a lot of this stuff a lot easier um, than it was without the calculus. So anyways, um, if your function approaches positive or negative infinity, as you approach some c value from one or both sides, then that c value is a vertical asymptote. Okay? You're either going up or you're going down. That's your vertical asymptote or an infinite discontinuity. So, Here's where our pre-calculus is super, super important. We are describing the continuity of a function. There are certain things that we should be aware of and that we should be alert of uh, kind of at all times. So if our function, let's just start with a simple one, is one over x, then you should think, okay, that's a rational function. Rational functions have issues with holes and vertical asymptotes. Start with holes. There's nothing to simplify or cancel, so that's not what we're going to have there. We are potentially going to have a vertical asymptote, so we set the denominator equal to zero. That says x equals zero is a vertical asymptote. So this is, um, it has a discontinuity. Well, we'll say has, um, has a vertical asymptote, and you can abbreviate that VA as a vertical asymptote, or I'm going to keep on trying to use these somewhat new terms, an infinite discontinuity. And you need to name the location at x equals zero. Well, it's not so much, this isn't going to be on the free response portion, um, but it could be a multiple choice question and they would use the term infinite discontinuity as opposed to a vertical asymptote. But some, a lot of times they still use the asymptote, but it's more of the removable and non-removable that they use. They usually don't get like that in depth in it. It's just a non-removable is a non-removable, whether it's vertical asymptote or a jump discontinuity. Okay, B, g of x is equal to x squared minus one over x minus one. Okay, again, red flag should be going off, rational function. We have issues with continuity when it comes to these. We should always start by factoring to see if we can simplify the numerator is x squared minus 1, that's the difference of perfect squares. We can cancel those x minus 1's, so we are left with x plus 1. So x plus 1 itself does not have any discontinuities. x plus 1 is a linear function, it's completely continuous, but the problem came from the fact that we canceled x minus 1, so that gives us a whole at x equals 1, so we need to say um, has a removable discontinuity at 
x equals 1. You always want to locate it when you're talking about the continuity of a function. Okay, piecewise functions, the red flag there should be do they meet at that changing point? At, in this case, 0, do the two sides of my piecewise function meet? Meaning, if I plug 0 into both pieces, am I going to get the same answer? When I plug it into that first piece, 0 plus 1 is 1. When I plug it into the second piece, 0 squared plus 1 is 1. They have the same value. So um, the only thing we would need to do from there is analyze the individual functions and make sure that they are continuous functions. Well, x plus 1, x squared plus 1, those are both polynomials. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. So this is a continuous function. Okay, h of x is continuous everywhere, or everywhere continuous. I don't know why they like to change the order of the words, but I guess it sounds more academic. Okay, h of x is everywhere continuous. Last function we're going to talk about here in this bunch is sine of x. Sine of x. Is there any angle that we cannot find the value of sine for? Do we have any issues? Think about the graph of sine. Is it a continuous graph? If you are not familiar with the graph of sine, you need to be. Okay, it looks somewhat like this. It's what we call periodic because it keeps repeating itself. So are there any holes, gaps, or anything in that? There is not. So sine of x is everywhere continuous. Cosine of x, just as a side note, cosine of x is also everywhere continuous. Sine and cosine are both everywhere continuous. Of these types of functions. So the statement at the beginning says the following types of functions are continuous at every point in their domain. So if there is something excluded from their domain, then that means there's some kind of, of discontinuity there uh, sometimes. So, and I'll talk about that as we go through. Number one, polynomial functions. Polynomial functions come up a lot. They can be any kind of form, any time you've got various raised powers, if you're talking about a polynomial function, that domain is all real numbers. Polynomial functions are continuous everywhere, 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 everywhere. Because you can plug in anything for x, you can raise it to whatever power you want to raise it to, by whatever number you want to multiply to, you can add whatever number you want to add or subtract, and you're still going to get an answer. So the domain's all the numbers, continuous everywhere. All right, rational functions. I was mentioning it as we were doing that problem, but you should think rational functions, uh, problems are holes and vertical asymptotes. So the domain is all real numbers except for holes and vertical asymptotes. Okay, holes are canceled factors. Vertical asymptote is the denominator equal to zero. And you solve for x. Okay? Because if you divide by zero, that function is, or that number is undefined, so that can't be a part of your domain. When you plug in that value of x, you get an undefined, you don't get an answer out. So that's why that value is not a part of your domain. Okay? So that means it's not continuous at holes and both classes. Radical functions don't come up as often, but they do come up every once in a while. Uh, we have two types of radical functions. We have even radicals and we have odd 
radical. So I'm going to break this domain into two. Okay? If it is an even, like in this case, the fourth root, okay, um, what's under the square root can't be negative. You can't take the fourth root of a negative number. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, so for even functions for the domain, uh, what's under the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. What's under the root is greater than or equal to zero. In this case, it's just x. Sometimes you might have x minus 1. So as long as your x values are greater than or equal to positive 1, then you're good. If you have an odd root, a cube root, a fifth root, you got all real numbers. You can take the cube root of a negative number. Okay, The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is what's going to give you negative 8. So you really only have a problem when it's an even number. Now, um, these aren't, radical functions are always continuous. They don't have these continuities. They just have restricted domains if it's an even function. Okay? It just has a restricted domain. It doesn't mean that it's not continuous. It just has a restricted domain. For number 2, uh, it is not, it has discontinuities where values are excluded from the domain. Okay? Exponential functions. Exponential functions are very, very, very popular in calculus as well. They have lots and lots of applications. Uh, so exponential functions, they have a domain of all real numbers. You can raise e to whatever power you want to raise it to, negative, positive, and zero, and you're going to get an answer. Uh, just remember that exponential functions can also be like 2 to the x or um, negative 5 to the x. Okay, those are also exponential functions, but more often than not, we use like e to the x. Okay, but it, the domain, the important part is the domain is all real numbers, it's completely continuous. Now, logarithmic functions. That domain is not all real numbers because, do you remember what we can't take the natural log of or any log of? A negative number, okay? Just kind of like square roots, you can't take the log of a negative number. Um, so same thing here. It's all real numbers. Well, let's write it this way. What's, un, uh, what's inside the logarithm? must be greater than zero, not equal to. You can't take the log of zero either. Uh, it has to be greater than zero. So for this function, the domain of the natural log of x is x is greater than zero. The reason why, remember the logarithm is the inverse of e to the x, so it switches the uh, relationship there. So the question is, Trig functions, okay, trig functions. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Sine and cosine, we just talked a second ago, their domains are all real numbers, okay? Sine and cosine are all real numbers. Tangent, however, is not all real numbers because tangent is sine over cosine. It's kind of like a rational function just with trig values instead of polynomials. Um, so where are we going to have an issue here? The tangent sine over cosine, where are there going to be problems? Well, not necessarily, well, zero of zero is going to be a problem, but just in general terms, where are we going to have an issue? What causes an issue with a rational function? When the denominator, when you divide by zero, when the denominator is zero. So where is cosine equal to zero? Where's cosine equal to zero? Pi over two. Where else? Three pi over two. Okay. 
pi over 2, 3 pi over 2.